Saints, I'm so glad that you have joined us today for this abiding reflection. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever been at a low point in your life? By that I mean a place where your prayers were not being answered, where you were growing cold and indifferent, you were discouraged, perhaps you were in a place where hope was dim and your faith was small. Well, can I tell you, you're not alone. I have been in that place as well. Jeremiah, the prophet, was in that place as well. Jeremiah chapter 15 is a low point in Jeremiah's life and ministry. Earlier on in chapter 2, God had told Jeremiah that the people of Judah had forsaken him, the fountain of living water, and that they had hewn out cisterns, broken cisterns, that could hold no water. God had given Judah long time to repent, and they did not repent. They continued in their sins. They were reluctant to turn to God. They were stubborn and hard-hearted. They had sinned. Manasseh had led them in great, great sin, and they continued to worship idols, to commit fornication, and God was going to judge them. In fact, their judgment was going to be harsh. They were going to be led to death by sword, by famine, and by captivity. God had told Jeremiah to stop praying. Can you imagine when God tells you, stop interceding for these people because I will not relent? You know, Jeremiah prayed with fervency, and it wasn't that he didn't have enough fervency in his prayer. God said, no, I'm not going to answer that prayer. I'm not going to relent. I'm still going to bring judgment. Jeremiah prayed full of faith, full of hope for the people. And God still said, I'm not going to relent. In verse 1, he tells them, Even if Moses and Samuel stood before me, my mind would not be favorable towards this people. Now listen, chapter 15 is a prayer of Jeremiah. It's a dialogue between him and the Lord. But Jeremiah is in a very low point of his life because to him, his ministry is not being successful. The people are not repenting. They're not turning towards God and God is not relenting in the judgment. And it says here that Jeremiah even did some practical things. He separated himself from the mockers, we're told in verse 17. Now, Jeremiah had done the right outward thing, but now Jeremiah has a trouble in his heart. You see, sometimes we can be doing the right things externally, but we have real deep trouble in our hearts. Our hearts are troubled. Our hearts are confused. Our hearts are doubtful and maybe faithless. Listen, in verse 18, Jeremiah says this about God. Will you surely be to me like an unreliable stream? Oh, listen, in the King James, the words are much harsher. He says, will you, will you, God, you there is capital Y. Will you surely be to me like a liar? God, have you deceived me? God, have you brought me into this intending never to answer my prayer and to really hurt me deeply? Because Jeremiah would see the devastation. He would see the terrible hurt that would come upon the people of God. So he says, God, have you deceived me? Have you been to me like an unreliable stream as waters that fail? You see, this was something going on in Jeremiah's heart. And God was dealing with Jeremiah's heart. And he's dealt with my heart as well. Listen, I've been praying for something for four years. And I know I'm praying according to the will of God. And I know that I'm praying according to the word of God. And God has given me glimpses of his presence. But I haven't received the answer. I haven't received the fulfillment. I've had to get to the place in my own life where I say God is sovereign. I'm praying according to your will. I'm praying according to your word. Lord, the outcome of this prayer is yours entirely. God can change a situation like this. It's up to him whether he does it or not. It's not up to me. That's true faith. See, today, faith is, God, I'm going to pray this prayer. It's something that I want, or, and you have to do it. That's not, that's not faith. That's not biblical faith. That's just you wanting to do what you want to do and twisting God's arm uh, to have his favor. That is not faith. That's craziness. But Jeremiah here, when he questions God, it comes from a heart of saying, God, 
Are you uncaring? Are you unreliable? Can I tell you something, saints? These thoughts are unworthy thoughts of God. Do you have unworthy thoughts of God today in your life? Has God not answered a prayer or is he taking too long? Have you grown impatient? Can we learn something today? Can we trust the Lord? Can we put our faith in God and not in the outcome or not in the answer to prayer, but just have solely our faith placed in God? God replies to Jeremiah. This is what he says. Jeremiah in verse 19, take out the precious from the vial. Saints, that's an important word for us today. We need to take out the precious from the vial. Separation. That's today's reflection. We need to separate, not only in our minds and our hearts, things that dishonor the Lord. Jeremiah was having some vile thoughts about God. He was thinking that God was uncaring and unreliable. These were unworthy thoughts of God. Jeremiah, unless you separate those thoughts from your heart and your mind, you can't follow me. You can't be my prophet. I can't partner with you to do what I want to do. Listen, some of us have to separate from our minds and our thoughts, thoughts about God that are unbiblical. And therefore, they're hindering our walk with the Lord. Some of us are angry with the Lord because he didn't answer our prayer. He didn't act the way we wanted him to act. Listen, when God doesn't meet your expectations or God doesn't answer your prayer in the way you thought, change your prayer, change your expectations. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. No matter how he answers your prayer, trust the Lord. It is high time, saints, that we begin to separate the precious from the vile. Even in some practical ways, Jeremiah said, I will not sit, I did not sit, and the assembly of mockers. There's a lot of assembly of mockers today. Some, dare I say, even churches are assemblies of mockers. Listen, saints, take inventory. Separate the precious from the vile. May that encourage you today. May you be hopeful and faithful, trusting in the Lord. Even though he's not answered you, even though it seems like he's distant, don't go by your feelings. Don't go by your feelings. Go by the precious word of God. May that encourage you today.